You can give them all to him. He deserves them. Look at that. It's Marissa's birthday and she's the one giving Dunbar cake. Oh, <laughs> See? Keeps you in check. Mmm. Did you get that? Oh, yeah. How are you feeling, Dunbar? Looking a lot better. Hey guys, Dusty Baker of Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. We're out here in the hay meta converted hay pasture, bison pasture. Now, a um, couple things I wanted to talk to you about is we're just doing a normal hair check, but I want to let you guys know how Dunbar is doing. Right in the middle of breeding season, it's important time for him to be healthy. And with all the shenanigans that's happened, uh, with Dunbar being in with Big Joe, getting pushed around a little bit, getting Dunbar out, and then back into this herd that he's currently in with Haas, and getting him to the hay pasture, finishing the fence, getting him out here, all those things. So now we've settled down some, and we are out here enjoying this beautiful pasture. And uh, what, one thing about this pasture is just, just full, packed full of native grasses. And that's something that we're trying to evolve here and restore basically. Um, but first thing, Dunbar is healed up really well. I don't see any more signs of him limping at all. He uh, seems to be strong and healthy at this point. He's had a couple weeks to recover now. And, and another good thing is, is having a young bull like Haas in here with him. You know, if Dunbar had one to 24 females, just Dunbar and 24 females, it would be hard on a bull that just got roughed up to probably breed a bunch of them um, or all of them. But with a young bull like Haas, Haas can kind of keep him in check and whatever Dunbar doesn't get, Haas is old enough to kind of, you know, fill in the rest, uh, essentially, if uh, Dunbar doesn't get them all covered. And plus, having a young bull in here also keeps them, it keeps them going, you know. It's, it's like, you know, I'm the big guy, I've got to breed these females, i got to compete for dominance. And so, having a young bull around uh, keeps Dunbar in check. But anyways, this pasture... Uh, specifically just a little bit of information about it it's 17 acres and before I even bought the property I worked it out with the owner to basically get the hay cut off of it and it hadn't been cut in a long time and we got a hay cutting off it I want to say we got about 16 bales wasn't great we're in the drought the next year I actually got it sprayed this was before we started the regenerative side of ag. It was the last thing to ever be sprayed on this property. So when we started the regenerative side of things, um, you know, Kevin and I kind of took out the whole spraying method and I'm working with the NRCS too and uh, Ethan and Cole Fagan. You guys hear me talk about them quite a bit. They've been out here, we've looked at the plants. Uh, Marissa and I and them two guys were just out here identifying a bunch of the grasses in this hay meta. And then last year, let me back up, last year we got another hay cutting off of it. So it's been groomed twice, and last year I think we got about another 17 bales of hay. And so we've taken the spraying out. There hadn't been any animals on this property until now, basically. So there's no trampling, there's no pee and poop. Uh, so that's been gone since April of 2021, essentially. This place has had a lot of recovery time, other than being sprayed and cut twice so you can see right here this is it's good stuff that's what we want um but if you look at this field it's kind of got some hint of blue and stuff now i don't know all my plant species very well i'm learning i took uh, plant biology at oklahoma state and it was one of the toughest courses at the time for me and you know being in college and young and uh probably didn't pay attention as much as i should have but uh, now I wish I would have because now I'm bringing all that college knowledge to trying to bring it back. So anyways, what we've got out here is we've got some big blue stem. Uh, right here is just uh, called something called Cytoats grama. And you can see it's seeded, which is important that it's coming to seed because if you let it come to seed, which this place has had so much recovery time and we put them in here recently, late essentially of the growing season, they come to seed and so when these things fall off they spread right 
and uh, whether it's consumed, it goes in the poop. Fertilizer, it essentially goes back in here. But we want these plants to reseed, like the side oats grama. And then you've got some little blue stem, you got big blue stem, and then I see some Indian grass. Uh, the little blue stem, big blue stem, and Indian grass are part of the big four. And we want as much of the big four as possible. There's some uh, other native grasses in here as well that are great for this. But what we've got here is in, in some places, you can see this Indian grass, it looks like maybe right there, is at almost two feet tall. And, and that's what you want. This was a spring native thistle. It is native thistle. It had a big, pretty purple bloom on it. Um, but that's what this was. It's okay if it's native. And then we've got some silver blue stem. Not as wanted in most pastures, but uh, it's seeded up as well. So we want them to seed and so they can sprout out and regerminate and go down into that seed bank because whenever these grasses go dormant, they'll come back up during the growing season uh, from, uh, you know, I guess, May, June, July growing season. So we're kind of getting towards the end of that growing season, but we've had so much rain, you know, pastures like this have just exploded. And uh, it's really important to have that, obviously, because the past two summers, it's been a major struggle with the drought. So it's good to see this. Got lots of vegetation still here. We're not over grazing. You can kind of see in patches where they're grazing, but um, they're taking the tops off. They're getting down here at the bottom and getting stuff. And uh, they, this is what they want. You know, most people probably know that bison just love grass. They'll eat some forbs and stuff. They love grass, they want grass. So I love this field. It's one of my favorite spots on this pasture or on this property on the Ponderosa. And uh, it's good to see this because the idea, the whole deal of burning and rotational grazing is for it to look like this someday on the rest of the property. That's why we've put time and effort into other parts like the burn unit we burnt last October. All those things are to get it to like this. Um, will it ever be like this? I don't know, but that's the objective. That's the goal is to try to get to bring back all the native. Who's? Talk about some of them that look are looking maybe pregnant. Pretty nice. You can actually see them. Oh gosh, really? Yeah. Um, that female. Oh yeah. Golly, she is pregnant. That's crazy. So we were out here the other day, and uh, Marissa looked at was looking at some of these females. This uh, heifer right here. These are all two-year-olds, minus Dunbar. Um, this female here is from Canada, and she's from the Wolverine Bison Company. And uh, Marissa looked at a couple of them and said, well, I saw that their bellies were big, and she looked at their uh, woman parts, and, you know, as these females get close to calving, there's parts of their body that start to swell up and get ready uh, to open up the cavity for calving. And looked at it and noticed it was pretty swelled up compared to the rest of the females. And then we just noticed that the uh, udder is um, pretty big and nipples are showing. Sounds weird, but <laughs> they are showing. And uh, it's hard to see on a bison uh, an udder. It's not like a not like a normal bovine, a normal cow. So we've got a pregnant two-year-old, which is going to be strange. But so that means that these females came in heat last summer and got pregnant by Haas. So these are gonna be Haas babies, which Haas is from South Dakota, from some friends there, Dakota Pure Bison slash Antelope Creek Bison, Scott Osmond and Alex Heim. Uh, so if you see the double white tags like this one here, she's one of my favorite ones. She's from South Dakota. Double white tags, it says ACB is Antelope Creek Bison. The yellow tags are Wolverine Bison. So um, we started off when we got the Ponderosa, we started off a good breeding uh, stock and that's why we kind of went out and got some from some good producers and that's where we're at now. But I think it's 139 Marissa and 
What was the other one? There was like three or four of them. There Is it 137? Like 134 maybe even. 130. It's crazy. So that means that they got pregnant before there were two, which is possible. When I got these calves, they were much bigger than ours. When they come from the north, they're typically bigger. And so they must have been mature enough to uh, obviously get pregnant. It's not my favorite thing that they're pregnant, you know, this early, because just for first timers, you could have issues, but hopefully, uh, hopefully everything goes okay. So this is something that we're going to be watching. This is something new, kind of a surprise to uh, us, but Marissa noticed it. So happy birthday to Marissa. Happy, happy birthday to my wife, Marissa, too, as well. We'll let people guess your age. <laughs> Let's not do that. Let's not do that. We're 105 right there. Look at her. Her headers are hanging too. Hers are. Who's? Hers, 105. 105. Right that's 139. That's 105 right here. Well, do you think maybe they're just coming in heat or is there hee haws? Uh, well, it's pretty flat. Sw pretty swelled up. Better. She locks so, you. Since you can see their udders, best, see how close are they? Days, weeks. Well, either hoo ha is what really tells you. Eli, that's what Eli's going to be looking at now. He's going to be checking them all. Oh, that one. Who's that right there? Sally Wackers. That is. That's a. One oh five. Yeah. She she's big. Come on, Dunbar. You can get him, Marissa, on that side if he does start following us. He don't care. She's pregnant, Marissa. What is that? 105. Did you already count her? Yeah. This one's pregnant. Oh, this is the one that has some little juice coming out. You said, hey, happy birthday, Marissa. Hey, Marissa. There's cubes in there if you want to dump them for me. Look at that. It's Marissa's birthday, and she's the one giving Dunbar cake. Ha, <laughs> You can give them all to him. Huh? You can give them all to him. He deserves them. Sorry I didn't bring y'all cubes today. 